Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the I League season number three. We have Moscow 5 Russia versus Asus Polar. Both teams not unknown to us, and recently we had a little taste of Moscow 5 taking out Burden United uh, from this remaining. very same tournament. I'm Lysander, going to be joined here by Blaze Casting. Welcome back to the broadcast, my friend. Yeah, happy to be back and looking forward to this match here. I mean, Aces Polar, they've been playing really well recently. FNG's drafts have been quite dynamic, and mm -hmm. just in general, he's been leading his team to some tremendous plays. But Moscow 5, they're always Ten fun to watch. They get involved. They get really into the thick of things quickly. And uh, Tron on oh, that Spirit Breaker is actually one of the most fun yes. things to see. Often going for like a dual offline setup with that Spirit Breaker, maybe look at the Phoenix again. That would be great. And uh, no matter the case, he's just he is able to do so much work and kind of a halfway between three and four position role on that hero it's, it's really fun yeah i really have to see if uh, asus polar did a little bit of homework like you said the phoenix spirit breaker dual Maybe lane on that now. uh off lane really does seem to be their style of play like uh like you mentioned i think the previous broadcast were you the one casting me for moscow oh. five and burden united uh spirit Ready breaker he has that knack of making an entire team busy uh, just dealing with him and that uh, the hero that really benefits from that is Phoenix and they'll Sniper to some extent as well but Sniper gets the first band slap right here so we will not be seeing Sniper nor Troll not to say I will complain about this uh, but Asus Polar do pick one of the Holy Spinner 3 and pick up the Axe and Lina as well um, Lina is actually really really Ten strong against remaining. a Queen of Pain middle if we are talking about Lina mid. There Five has been some support remain. play on the Lina, but uh, Lina against Queen of Pain, Lina is favoured in the matchup. One of the rare few, actually, that's favoured in this matchup. Now, this is an interesting pick here. The Disruptor is usually considered a hero that is just straight up a counter pick to a lot of heroes in the metagame right now. You get a Storm Spirit in there, Static Storm him. If you're jumped by like a Clockwork or something, you can glimpse him back. Obviously, counter synergy against the Wisp as well, but none of that is here. We've got Lena, Axe, Lion, and Shadow. And it's quite surprising to me that they pick up the Disruptor at this point in the draft. I mean, obviously, it's still an overall all around great support and you're bound to find some use out of that glimpse but the only thing that comes to mind right now is glimpsing back the axe after he blinks in but even then his taunt is pretty much done its job it, he's gonna be pulling they're actually gonna be following wherever the axe came from uh, while the berserkers call stands and yeah it's just a, an interesting pickup at this stage but maybe just want to emphasize the team fight obviously they've already got their spear breaker phoenix duel figured out the queen of pain me. is going to be rock lane and, and Disruptor is just uh, one of those kind of all-around supports that'll be able to Dire do some work. Uh, he, well he's a really good zoner that's for one mm -hmm. and yeah, I think definitely. the main plan here is to charge someone and if they see the charge coming and try and run away you can glimpse them back because you have vision. I think that's the plan. You know it does look like it and we have Phoenix so I, I, I think it, it could be a very possible combo plus Disruptor is a good solo support because if you're running spirit breaker phoenix your disruptor is the only guy that's going to be supporting your safe lane core so mm -hmm. i think having someone like a disruptor to be that zoning hero is uh, pretty efficient but right now you'll probably see moscow 5 to go for a carry that is not too dependent on support space making and maybe someone that can hold his own ground we think along the lines of razor viper slock slock has been taken out and even the lone druid uh, which has been uh, picked up before and combined Five with the Phoenix remaining. with that Sunray uh, it is banned out so Asus Polar they have, a, they have a rough idea what Moscow 5 are looking to do so I wouldn't be surprised if they pick something like a you know Razor Viper right now any other ideas? Yeah. hmm just to kind of round things out here I mean for Asus Polar they've got already pretty much their full core if they want Lena mid so I would say just a, another good support for them. Um, the, obviously the Sark implies otherwise. They think Belina could be a support following up on the Lion. But I, I would say actually they could be looking for a, just a, a support here. Yeah, so yeah, a, a Skyra banned out earlier. So it's just got to be somebody with some good control. Uh, I mean, they've already got a lot of damage potential with Lina, Lion, Axe. I mean, you already just start off the fight by Laguna or Finger of Deathing somebody, and then the Culling Blade comes through. You just want somebody that can build off that momentum and kind of make sure that you can play reactively as well. But there are so many good supports in the pool, it's really hard to pin one down in particular. Um, I would honestly say, like, a support silencer wouldn't be too bad in my mind. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, support Sansa would be strong here. Uh, I'm more, I'm feeling a dazzle, but sure. Yeah, maybe is there Venge? Is Venge actually no Venge is here? Yeah, they could actually get Venge as well. Mm -hmm. I think Venge dazzle, uh, like you said, support Sansa to deal with this Phoenix. It's very possible. Uh, but picking up Silencer means they have to rely on Lonely Lion for stuns. No, not really. Oh wow, Rave King. Okay. All right, actually, this is uh, this is actually a good pick as well. Uh, a hero that can soak up a lot of damage, not just relying on X. So they will have two frontliners. Yeah, and if you look at this, like essentially now that you've got this tri lane of Lena Lion Wraith King, Lena will be playing that kind of four position there. But she's got all the setup in the world. Like you've got mm -hmm. Wraith Fire Blast and the two disables from Lion. Those Light Strike Rays are going to be pretty easy to hit. In general, it's just like how do you use Spirit Breaker well in that matchup? Like if it is going to be Spirit Breaker Phoenix off lane duo, how do you actually approach a quadruple stun lineup come level two? Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be difficult, especially if Wraith King gets a Blink Dagger early. We'll have to see how fast this uh, support uh, lineup farms or rather does uh, they do have double stun with shadow fiend so anyone that off lane is going to have a tough time spirit breaker is going to have to give them a lot of space even if he has big num with him i think it's uh it's still going to be a tricky lane for him and yeah like we say a hero that can fend for himself weaver is a perfect choice and with glimpse he is actually very very potent at killing uh target we'll see now uh, what asus polar decide to do if um, they do you think they go aggressive try lane here? I guess you know scout uh, s sensing the two one two and then they go for it, or will they just stick to the plan, put Shadow Fiend on that safe lane, ensure that nothing wrong goes to him? Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, I mean the one problem with an aggro try is that there's no real carry to pressure. Like you could put pressure on the Weaver, but he can still survive in that situation pretty well. Uh, you can just disjoint uh, the stun from the Wraith King or just stay away from the Lion at all costs. You will limit his farm, but that just means they win two lanes instead of uh, potential more. But I don't know. I, I think the Axe would do fine in that safe lane if they did go aggro try. I just don't know if the aggro try would actually get enough to make it worthwhile. Uh, do see early on no right, courier uh, picked up I'm yet. I'm going to try call you back. I think there's some robot nonsense going on here. My Skype might be buggy. I'm just going to restart Skype and I'll call you again. All right. Just give me a moment. Alright guys, I'm gonna restart my Skype so you'll hear some blooping and booping. So hopefully we don't hear uh we don't have a uh, first blood happen while we're at it. Really hope we don't get first blood. So I'm just gonna keep the camera here on them while I try and call Blaze back. And I know some of you guys are saying that some robots, so I just wanna get rid of it before we have that trouble uh going into things and oh wow instant D ward coming out. So we have a Lina D ward immediately. We have a core Lina on the side lane, I guess. All right, let's just try call Blaze back. Thirty seconds to battle. Hello. 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 Yeah, I think it's better now. I think. Oh, lovely. So it's interesting. They on the side of Aces Polar, they bought four Century Wards, and that means they have no ground courier right now. Like if the, one of the supports gets a bounty run or something, they can fix that pretty quickly. But at least for the moment, no courier is on the field. Is this new meta? I'm, the sentries are valuable against Weaver, but I, I don't mean, know. They, they, they de watered the, the observer immediately. So, And FNG is actually playing spot Lina. We're going to have a level 1 fight here. Illidan Storm is jumping into the slander. Oh, LSA and double wow. stun. New player in a lot of trouble. He goes for Bucks first. He might actually die here as a result. Don't attack the axe here. And new player, oh wow. One more chop would have uh, seen to him. And that's going to be first blood going the way of Lina. Oh no, actually Lion. Lion taking that first blood. It's going to be Courier. And quick boots for him actually, nearly. And um, gonna drop tangos for this axe. So once again we see interesting lanes non um Well, it's gonna be G playing the Shadow Fiend instead and new player going mid on a Weaver. So we have SF versus Weaver mid. Wow, this is something else. Uh off lane lion is it? Is it off lane lion now? Wait, no, off lane X. Or maybe they just sack the top lane, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, maybe I think that that's what they're gonna do. Okay, so they sack the off lane, and we have Wraith King, Lina, Lina support here. So something we don't see as much. Lina support, I think it's a waste. But if you get a good start, it can still be very powerful. And remember, you talked about all that setup stun. I guess it can work to some extent. It's something we don't consider now. Seeing a lot of mid Lina, we just. 
take it for granted uh, that Lina will be going mid. So instead to put SF there, he'll do moderately well against Weaver. I don't think he should die. Um, and once he gets to level 4, level 5, he'll start crushing the lane. So uh, I don't see him losing this lane, but a gank from Spirit Breaker could see to that very quickly. So. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see how it plays out, but it's just really interesting to see the Lena and the Lion, what they can do when they really collaborate. Like, we saw in that big fight for the bottom rune there that that was a two-man Light Strike as well as a two-man Earth Spike, and that just cinches the win. I'm actually really surprised they didn't get the Weaver on top of that without mm -hmm. that Shikuchi. Now, they did have a small error where they both put Sentry Wards down in the area there, so they invested that early uh, four Sentries, and they kind of overlap when they put them down, but, you know, they got enough out of it to make it... Perfectly fine mistake. Now they go for some stacking, some room coverage, and uh, it's not going to be. Oh, it's oh, actually going to be a nice stun. Again. Cancel the charge. Oh, if they hit, they actually should have hit on a spirit breaker. It would have been another kill. But now the fire spirits are going to cause trouble for this tri lane here. So they're going to back off this spirit breaker phoenix dual lane. Uh, so far, not being able to do as much as uh, there's so much stun. I don't think spirit breaker can go in with his. Um, with uh with and do whatever he wants so right now i think the safe play would just to be play it cool get as much exp as you can and wherever last hits are concerned get some uh Illidan getting first hit bash there definitely not going to be happy about that i'm um, going for the ray fire stats so uh, that's going to be his build of choice and lena has rotated mid g giving her a sip of the bottle and now SF hits level 4, so I think he'll start destroying this lane now with the raises, and especially with the sentry mid. Oh, new player might not have been seeing that. G, thinking about that raise, uh, gonna cancel it. If it was a level 5 uh, level five on that Shadow Fiend, it would have been a kill on the Weaver if he timed it right. Yeah, still juking here back and forth. New player has a lot of stick charges, but he's not enjoying this lane. And yeah, Tsukuchi to try and get that last hit. Queen of Pain, though, is getting free farm, so they'll have to watch mm -hmm. it. He bought a lot of regen as well, expecting a. Uh, a very pressured lane, and in the end, she and Slander has a perfectly open lane. They'll have to try and keep Creep Pilgrim uh, to their side. Yeah. I don't think this uh, strategy from Asus would have worked out too well if not for the fact that they had just full coverage of their jungle. Like, there's no way that the Phoenix and Spearbreaker invade to drop any wards. Obviously, they won the initial level one fight, so just overall, they feel really good about. Uh, the Axe's er early progression, he just farms up for the Tranquil Booth, he's level 4, and now he can go to the top lane and meet almost two creep waves uh, very, very quickly. So, great position for him to be in. Uh, the, they're not really too worried about those first four minutes of Queen of Pain farming, and the end result is just good for them. Oh, new player taking some hits from the high ground, but he does get to bottle up the Invisorin, more importantly for the sustainability oh, than anything face else. The Queen of Pain. Now, the charge on him, he might die, I think G might actually go down here. If he's not mm -hmm. careful, and yep, here comes the cow, instant death. Oh, they bashes him on a high ground. Oh, jump Whoa. up. LSA, looking for it. Oh, Dragon Slave. That was really close. Nearly turned that fight around for the SF. But yeah, G, uh, wandering on his own, lonesome uh, against the Spirit Breaker. Not exactly the safest decision. And he will be brought down for a new player. Uh, gonna pop that Sukuchi face up against FNG. But FNG is gonna have none of that. Oh, TK Phobos running up to that. Running up to that Weaver, Weaver has Sukuchi in one. Oh no, they call him in time! But no, it's not gonna be enough damage to Dragon Slave, not enough. FNG getting first hit bash there by Tron, and looking for more bashes there uh, was that Spirit Breaker. And now G comes back into his lane, and Axe will happily give it back to him. And yeah, like you said, DK Phobos got a double wave now, five and a half, nearly half his ultimate now. O only wish he had it though against that Weaver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have been nice, but they had to stack a little bit just to kind of guarantee some disabled will connect with new player, and, and then they do send him back home. I mean, Weaver with the bottle, magic wand, and just being so slippery in the first place, it's it's a win just to kind of get him off the lane. But now, uh, G, the question is, how is he going to progress? Because the one drawback to opening the axe like they did is that there are no stacks for the SF to farm, which is very uncommon for a Radiant Shadow Fiend. So he's going to have to really just win out the lane even further here around this oh, level 5, level 6 mark. And they're going to try to... Oh, the race missing, though. The LSA will land on Tron, and now Disruptor comes in looking to kill him off. They bring SF back into the middle. I'm not sure it's going to work out for them this time. There's a lot of heroes here. They will actually take him out, and now Lion, he has to look for that Hex. He doesn't get the Hex. FNG going down the nice Sonic Wave coming in, kills both supports. Zach wow. XC with the Queen of Pain coming in at the last moment and cleaning house. Exactly what a Queen of Pain has been built to do, which is mop of duty, you know? Owl 3 looks pretty clean now after that one. 2, 4, yeah, 6, bottom, minutes. easy charge bottom. This is going to be pretty what? much the guarantee of the <laughs> Wraith King. He'll try to no, survive. 
One hit, there he goes. Ah, that is a painful losses for the side of Aces Pole. How did they just knew so um, really, he just ate a lot of creep auto attacks. He does he does have a stout shield, but like he was harassing the Phoenix nearly on power, and he was just trying to trade hits that ended up bringing him to a pretty low HP value. But yeah, no, I just feel like Moscow Five learned a timing where Aces have nothing going for them. Like they got greedy with the axe play and how he moved about the jungle, and although his progression is great, it doesn't really pay off until you get that blink dagger out. So that's oh, the time they, charge they can him again. the lanes. There's Kill okay, off no the SF, sun. and now maybe uh, Illidan yeah. again. Illidan going down, yeah, it's definitely, I think he's going to go down. One more spread on him, and there, down he goes. The line coming in, though, he will get that uh, will get that double stun on the big num. Axe comes in with the Lina, and Troll, oh! No! Gets the charge away in time, now Slander is going to block him out with the kinetic feel. There'll be none of that for now, DK Phobos running in, Slander charging in with that. LSA is going to land, though. No, here comes the Queen of Pain, takes out the Axe before he has a chance to do any Duncan. Uh, they will kick out the Disruptor, and... Queen of Pain is bottling up uh, that haste, so Lil is going to hide in the trees for a little bit, you know, go on refuge for a while, but not going to show his face. 3 and 7 to trade X for Disruptor, not the worst, um, not the worst trade considering how this game has gone, but still pretty bad nonetheless. This Lina Lion combo not exactly working out for them. Yeah, but it doesn't really come online until level 6, mm -hmm. so they still have some time to make it work, but... In this uh, version, early game is not, not really a yeah. big deal. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of potential with all these stuns, but even if they don't realize them now, they still have some real good kill mechanics that'll bring them back into the game in the near future if they execute well. But we do see another teleport down, Spirit Breaker refills ZXC's bottle. Beautiful. And it even gives them a free sip. That's four fr free bottle charges for them. And then uh, they can put aggression back down bottom. Or even if the Wraith King skills reincarnation, unless they use it to turn the fight around, it's really not all that valuable. It's just denying one kill. And oh, new player finding a double damage rune on Weaver. The Geminate is going to be so real down bottom. Yeah, Lil is hiding, waiting to give Illidan the support he needs. And there's reincarnation. I think it would be really ill-advised for M5 to type this uh, without some proper backup. But... We'll see. They could get really rough. This is the Russian team we're talking about. Here comes Elden. Stun on the Dragon Sea. They might actually get this reincarnation. Triple man. I, I stone, uh, stone pike. And now Zach XC gonna have the reincarnation back. Elden goes in there with another stun. Crits the Queen of Pain. One more hit will take him out, and that's the Queen of Pain going down. Tron gonna charge away from his problems once again. G looking for a kill, and that Earth Spike really make the play there. New player. One more hit will get the job done. No G. Oh, uh, going in there, predicting that race, and DK Phobos oh. comes in. There's going to be a dunk on that Weaver, not necessary. Uh, the axe, old-fashioned way, not needing to spin. Just going to clank down on that Weaver, the Earth Spike. I was about to say Stone Totem. Uh, but yeah, that Earth Spike hitting two targets there. Nearly hitting the third as well, but that was perfectly lined up. And like I said, ill-advised to dive reincarnation there. Five seconds of downtime, plus the mass slow. Uh, it was just a bad idea. They didn't have Supernova for that as well. Yeah, it could have been better for Moscow 5 if the Weaver really got a bunch of auto attacks off there. Like, he had double damage, the Geminate attack, but he kept on having line of sight issues down in the tree line south of the tower. There was really good juking coming up from both the Lean Little Lion. These guys have only a two armor apiece, so that a single Geminate auto attack times two, that actually takes out about half their health with that double damage rune. But in the end, he still might be looking for something. The Courier is not going to be found, but... Yeah, Phobos. now new player. Oh, he still wants it. He still could get it, but no. Yeah, the Phobos. courier will survive. And Yeah, but I really feel like it was all a new player there to get some more auto attacks out, kill the supports in the back line, so those stuns just didn't keep flying. But he only really got the, the lion down low, and then he kept on getting juked. So in the end, Moscow 5 probably regretting their engagement. Yeah, lion does have finger now, so it will be a trouble for them if they do decide to dive anything. A single Ooh, he hero gave all this. too. Yeah. A single hero of theirs will be in big trouble if they do overextend. They they might have to plan for losing a hero the next fight. Because Lil with his finger of death nearly guarantees that. Oh, big call on Slander. I think they might just finger this. Yep, they might just go for the finger. Oh, Disruptor pops his ultimate at a very last minute. He won't get that kill. The clan comes out. Now Lil gonna run away. The Queen of Pain going after him. Then the Shadow Dagger will actually take him out. It's gonna be enough. So, but DK Phobos will blink away after claiming his prize of the Disruptor, but the Queen of Pain coming in at the last moment, so holding back on that Finger of Death uh, might cost, might have cost him his life there, but yeah, he will have it for another target. Zagreus Z going for Necrobook. So, yeah, so I, I, I mean, believe someone be... talked about this before. Uh, was it? I'm not sure who talked about this. Like, uh, Waga, he did mention that uh, Queen of Pain 
uh, has this problem pushing towers by herself. So uh -huh. this necro book does offset that to some extent, um, sure. and gives her the good stats to do it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she, she's really good at wave clear and she's really good at hero killing, but as far as actually taking objectives on the back of that, they're a little weak right now. But I think most importantly, it's the attributes you get out of it, because uh, you see the Weaver build, he's actually going Treads, Earn a Shadow, oh, nice combo, onto the Shadow Fiend, bringing him down, but the Taunt, the Laguna, that's the death of your Queen of Pain, a huge boon for Asus, as she was level 10 at the time. Yeah. At least she didn't have a streak there to give away. Yeah. But yeah, well, she did kill the, the Shadow Fiend middle, and Ilden still looking for a target. He hasn't gone blink, actually. And he's picked up a glove. It might be a Millstrom. Oh, they're gonna charge in on Ilden. They stun on the victim. The Nether Strike coming in as well. The stun goes up. It will hit Tron. Ilden Storm Rage trying to get himself denied. Will he get denied by the Knolls? Will not happen here. Victims on a dominating spree. Lil, gonna go in for a call. Double man call. Finger of Death will drop slander really low, and the Fire Spirit will land on him. The cow oh, goes on to him. Takes him out, and now DK4 was in a lot of trouble. The LSA coming in as well, but that's too much damage. You know, even that, uh, even that axe to handle, and now he'll be brought down. G back into the fight. He's buying mechanism. I can't say I disagree. There's been too much new cage coming on here, and now FNG getting charged to the side. That G walking into the cow as well, and yeah, well, Tron's gonna have himself a free express mid. Uh, mid travel there, so he will get out of the fight safely. Big them looking to re-engage here with that Weaver. Okay, well, they, sh they show him there. So the Weaver as well as the Phoenix going to be shown once again. Man of Midas is going to be available for the Phoenix. And somehow these games we cast, uh, the Phoenix is all managing to get their items up. And now we're going to blink away in time. Lion. TP a little bit too delayed. Uh, we'll not get that kill. So. Yeah, so I, I actually feel like Tron, intended or not, he's getting some amazing greater bashes just charging through people and actually like saved some lives in that situation there. Like he actually got the bash on the axe, uh, he was TPing away and he just is able to, with all this control in the fight itself, as long as he's using charge back to back, he's actually con bringing in a lot of disables so the rest of M5 can bring the damage and it's been impressive so far. I mean Weaver is now 7 assists and 1 kill and now, like, she's just been using the Urn of Shadows all the time to heal her allies, to do some damage, and the end result is a very tanky set of heroes that kind of counteracts the game plan of Aces. Aces just want to kind of two-shot people, drop a Laguna or a Finger, follow up with a Calling Blade, and it's easy kills. But uh, the way that pe these M5 heroes are building with the Necro, with the Urn of Shadows, the Tread Spirit Breaker, it's just really hard for those combos to go out on anybody but the low-value targets. Wait, Weaver is a girl? Uh, I think it's androgynous, or it's not not stated, but... <laughs> okay. Alright, uh, but yeah, like you said, the tankiness from M5, or the, the general resilience of the lineup, is, uh, yeah, is something to be feared here. There's a lot of a lot of things happening here for M5's lineup. When they team fight, there's just too many things for a Lion and Lina to handle. They are not the most flexible of supports and they are very good at picking on target if they are the ones doing the initiation. But if they're trying to fight back, uh, it's not really their way. Because Spirit Breaker, Phoenix, they cause so much trouble. There's your glimpse into Spirit Breaker charge, like I said, Kinetic Field. Trapping FNG as well as a bonus and now the Sun will cut them off. This is the worst part about that Phoenix. They oh. cut them off. Oh man! That Sonic Wave, that was perfect placement there. Probably use a Protractor for that. Illidan gonna be taken out. The Reincarnation will be totally wasted. Aces Fall are getting Mobbed here, and Illidan now coming back, trying to hit at a very, very low attack speed, and Tron will just charge him down into little pieces. 7 to 19, Moscow 5, man. Where did this team come from? Asus Polo, one of the top CIS teams now, would say that, you know, top 3. And Moscow 5 just come out of nowhere and destroy. 7,500 gold and XP. Um, advantage here. The net worth sitting at 8,002 is the Queen of Pain, way above Shadow Fiend at number two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are just on a tear right now. They are cruising through this lineup, just using all their early fight potential to really control the state of the game. And the more fights they win, the more levels they get, which means they'll be able to survive this uh, Aces initiation much more effectively. Like the Lena and Lion aren't going to be hitting level 11 for another five or so minutes and by then we're going to see another round of tank items coming out from Moscow 5. The Necro 3 is finished, um, Weaver's got all her stat items figured out and the Phoenix's survivability is kicking in now that he's actually uh, approaching level 11. Like the two past two supernovas haven't been killed but they're only the, the five hits from death. 
They're the level one supernova, and that's uh, dangerous to use that. But the, the combo that they're actually running right now is essentially when supernova is going to come out, the kinetic field the people so that they're in range of the egg, but not in range to attack it. That's the big thing. They're still in the, the burn radius. They're still going to get stunned, but they can't do anything about it directly, and that's huge. The that main, is a the really, main problem really is skilled combo. The cores like X are front, uh, up front. Shadow Fiend's usually being focused. He's arranged, and Wraith King is usually not in position to hit an egg because uh, he's usually not in melee range of it. Lion and mm -hmm. Lina really can, uh, cannot afford the health points to stick around and hit the egg. So they have a lot of problems when it comes to hitting egg. And like you said, now that it's level 2, 8 hits, it's getting harder. Because they can't, r they, they can't sit and hit the egg when there's a Queen of Pain screaming in your face, Spirit Breaker charging after a core, and Weaver uh, just you know sliding through the, the lines and trying to pick someone off. And now we're going to charge onto Lina, FNG in a lot of trouble. He's going to drop that LSA, he will land uh, a lot of damage onto Tron. But yeah, now they're gonna go. Wow, TP out, very bold. And well, he go. He will get himself uh, taken down despite spending that hundred bucks on an attempted TP. A desperate attempt to get out of trouble, though. This lineup from Asos Bowler is just not working. They had so many issues with the bottom lane, the aggressive stance that M5 took, and they just haven't gotten off the ground swiftly enough. Like, I was really hoping DK Phobos' blink dagger was going to be able to just net them a chain of kills. They are, got one on the disruptor, but they cost them lives. And since then, there has been no positive trades coming out for Asos. In fact, they're about to lose their bottom tier 2, and with the tier 1 and mid already taken care of, this opens up Roche wide for Moscow 5. Yeah, and giving Aegis to the Queen attack. of Pain that's a really hard to pick down, uh, take out is, it's gonna be a real problem. Tron, edging closer to that BKB, and well, apart from Max, what's gonna lock down a Spirit Breaker here? We'll see, because it's, uh, it's definitely not looking good for Aegis, uh, Aegis Polar fans. I believe the Dota 2 lounge betting is 84 to 16 percent. So, good luck, fan straights. I hope you guys didn't bet too many Arcanas. It's just uh, going to be a I mean, nail biter. Are playing far better than a lot of people expected them to, and it's just I think they're really pulling together as a team, finding their tempo, finding where they can be most effective. And there's a lot of teams that would kind of rest on their laurels when they see that they're winning the top lane as much as they were. They'll let the Shadow Fiend do his thing, but oh, FNG, nah, he'll get the TP out, thank goodness. But top lane, we're actually going to see the blink call go on to Big Num, and mm, he's, wow, that's he's, a big he's, kill. He's All right, here comes that CIS throw we are all so familiar with. Uh, but yeah, the blink, blink dagger was picked up, so at least he didn't lose any money. Mm -hmm. uh, Slander going Ogre Club first, so I assume it's going to be a uh, Aghanim Scepter. Uh, and Necro units now gets deployed double damage as well. They are uh, going to charge into Roshan and with that Spirit Breaker. Now today I'm going to find out if Necro unit works on Roshan. Oh, he does. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. I mean, obviously, with his health pool, it's not the biggest contribution, but yeah, he's still, they take care of him, and obviously the aura helps their entire team bring it down quickly, so that's going to be the death of Roshan, and only for the tier 1 top, which was slated to fall pretty soon. Yeah. Going to co-op, they spoke up right after, and they're going to look to drop some pressure in, and wow, uh, they spot FNG dropping a ward on the high ground, I'm not sure how, yeah. though. I think it's just Tower Vision. I think that he made the mistake and uh, went into a very clear cut tier 2, can see that type mm -hmm. position, and that's uh, going to be a no-no. They're going to deward that very quickly. Yeah, yeah, now the smoke comes in. He's not going to see this one coming, and I hope he doesn't cast a spell because they will see him oh. right away, and now they know. Bye, my friend. Oh, will he TP out in time? Nope. Glimpse. Slam. Down. I told you this glimpse was a good idea. It was you know, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a just vision. was odd. It's a it was thing. odd during the draft, but yeah, no matter yeah. what, the glimpse is an extremely powerful tool, and I wouldn't say they've really gotten a lot of kills off mm -hmm. of it, but they have the option. Uh, it's yeah. always the option there, and I, I think it's just super strong because uh, normally you need uh, heroes like Bounty Hunter, Beast Master, to do vision, but what better than Spirit Breaker, you know? Certainly. You can't, so I mean, you can't obviously, to flee in front of him anymore. You just have glimpse right. waiting there in the back lines and. Oh, well, you just hide in the trees and wait for the target to try and run, and then you glimpse him back into the Spirit Breaker's arms. So I think it's really strong. And Good potential. I mean, Tron knows what he wants. He finds his target, and he's able to just jump on them. Now with the BKB, you can't even cancel that charge out without the Berserker's call. So, And that's unlikely, considering the, how Greater Bash works against Axe, but... Yeah, just in general, I, I think that they, they have really good offensive chase potential, and they're going to be able to follow through with that. I mean, every single one of Moscow 5's heroes 
are designed to run down the opposition. You've got your Queen of Pain blink, your Disruptor glimpse, your Icarus dive on the Phoenix, and now has a blink as well. And then, of course, Shikuchi in charge, which we've seen already in action. But mid lane is going to be the jump against ZXC, and the damage should be sufficient to bring him down. Oh, no! no he has the static anyway. storm's enough. But DK Phobos, oh, going to be mecked up? Not going to be enough. Oh, will it be? Requiem of Souls will come out, and the charge now going on to G. There's a BKB. There's nothing his supports can do. They're going to roast him, give him a sunburn. And a supernova will be deployed once again, preventing any reinitiation here from Asus Polar. They'll lose their Shadow Fiend and the Axe. ZXC not forcing to, not having to use that Aegis of Immortal. Uh, I'm almost positive that, that he thought he died because after that engagement, he walked away and then he just literally stood in the same spot for a good eight or nine seconds. Like, I want that full heal, man. For fighting, so and Phoenix says, "I got the second best thing." And drops a sun ray on his entire team. Value heals coming out. The sun spa is really nice. Mm -hmm. So that's an easy tier two. 23 to 8 and tremendous kill lead. And I guess you could say that they kind of need this kill lead because they are going to taper come like the 40, 45 minute mark. They're not going to be as effective. But as it stands right now, they've got a ton of momentum behind them. They have some decent scalability on their heroes. And honestly, like Asus just, they don't have a way of sticking damage in the fights. Like, if the Spearbreaker sticks to Shadow Fiend and doesn't allow him to get his ultimate off, then yeah. suddenly the only people that are doing damage is with their ultimates. Yep, and Wraith King is not in a position to land big hits yet. Uh, he'll need a little bit more. He is forced to rush for a BKB. Other than getting that Midas uh, does help him cope with the farming, but right now if you look you at his net worth, though? he's fourth from the bottom. What do you think about Illidan's skill build? Not going for any more in the crit this early on. I guess he, he just realizes that he doesn't have to damage. He's more of a frontline tank now. And I guess that one point of Mortal Strike is just... I don't know. It's more of a courtesy thing. Oh, Tron gets his BKB up in time, so Lil will not be getting anything. Now Lil facing a lot of pain here. He's going to be doing the hard time in the fountain here. He drops the, uh, drops the stun onto Bignum. We'll try and do some damage, but now Sonic Wave comes out. DK Phobos gets himself run over by that train wreck, which is Spirit Breaker. And I like this Shadow Blade coming out here for SB. Always fun to see Invisible Cow, and we're going to have a lot of trouble for Asus Polar if they aren't already in enough. Uh, yeah. G, after the mech, going BKB, farming some Ancients, but he's going to run into Slander oh, no. here, and now he does not have the means to run away, and they're going to charge him. There is no running from this. The Glimpse will come out, and he'll be sent right in there, clanked by the Spirit Breaker. There is going to be your Fire Spirits and the Scream. Ow, ow, ow. Down he goes, uh, and 8.26 is the score, and ZXC still has not suspended any of those Aegis charges. Not to say that he has a lot of them, just one. And Desolator is now picked up by a new player. So this Weaver mid turned out well for them. Yeah, I mean, I'll, the big thing about Weaver mid is that you can't gank this hero. Like, he's just able to outmaneuver you as soon as he has a point Shiguchi, which turned out to be level 2. And he'll get some reliable farm. So he got involved in the fights pretty quickly. And he wasn't a real target. Like, he's only died once this game, and that's not for lack of trying. But Earnest Shadows, Treads, Aquila just gives him enough HP to survive in general against this team lineup, and then he can go hyper-offensive. And now we've seen the Desolator, which is just the perfect item for him to clean up kills, uh, especially against these targets that are already so susceptible to physical damage output. Oh. This is, a, like you said, a very rough game for Aces Polar. DK Phobos once again getting charged there, trying his best to muster up a BKB. But whether or not that BKB turns out to be useful with the constant charging he's been receiving, it's... Uh, Oh, it's certainly does uh, remain to be uh -huh. seen here. FNG as well as Lion. Well, once again, I'd like to take this moment to hate on support Lina, but you know, it's not really that issue here. It's more. Yeah, uh, it's there's there's a lot wrong. That that might be like a small portion of it. That the other some other supports could react a little bit better uh, against hyper offensive play, but I, I would say that the the light strike she's gotten while trying to defend under tower it seems to be valuable enough to to make it worth the pick. Maybe not worth. I, they picked it up in phase one which definitely isn't really that value but no matter the case uh it's just moscow five have a better game plan across the map they know the kills they want they know how to get them and you're talking about like whether or not the bkbs would be enough but i i don't think they have a choice no matter the case like they're they're worried about the current state of the game they're not worried about how the game will be 20 minutes from now and so the bkb is probably the best item 
uh, at level with its 10 and 9 second charges, and that's what they're playing around with right now. It's actually going to be FN Charlie pretty much going down. The BKB makes it guaranteed. And, uh, oh, yeah. we're going to go Keep fight in Lion. Lion. Oh, wow. Instant scream and with Lincoln's. Uh, there's not enough setup for him, and now he'll lose his reincarnation. We might actually lose Illidan a second time. DK Fumble's going in there. ZXC no longer has that Aegis. He could actually go down here, spin, spin, spin to win race. No, not enough. And now DK Fumble's failing math class. Not gonna be able to get that Queen of Pain kill. Illidan still thinking about that kill. He might assist the, he might assist the Creep Wave. Thinks about it. Illidan applies a lot of death oh, against applied with a lot of Desolator debuff. And now Requiem of Souls G charging it up. DK Fumble gets hit by a. Gets hit by the Weaver, so he will not be able to, dis uh, to come in for a blink call. And Wraith King goes down in the back lines once again. G uh, BKB it up. His first BKB charge used defensively. 8 and 29. Only 26 minutes in. I gotta tank Russia for this. I love the games. And CIS Dota, never a lacking action at any point in the game. Yep, and now just, I mean, they're cruising for a pretty quick win here they they're working towards the Aghanim scepter on the disruptor the shiva's guard soon on the phoenix at that point you're going to have a level 16 phoenix the big egg with 11 attacks to destroy and that attack speed slow no, along with all the control that we've already seen from moscow 5 no way in hell you're breaking down the egg he can put it out as aggressively as he wants to and it's barely worth the 11 auto attacks uh, just because you're automatically in retreat for Asus. They can't stand that kind of a, a fight, they, even with BKB as a mechanism. They're purely on the defensive. This Queen of Pain's gotten huge. I mean, she's level 17. 560 experience per minute. ZXC can just tear them oh, apart. Yeah. Kyle's coming in for solo kills and FNG. Wishing he had that Yule Scepter. Shadow Blade. Oh, man, that just sucks ass. Oh, FNG getting bashed on the high ground, second chances in life. And now Tron says, I hit mine. He's going to get battle hungered. And will he be able to charge away in time? Two seconds, one second, and no. And out he goes. Oh, he bashes oh. DK Phobos on the way out. Yeah, you don't touch him. And no, he's going to escape. Very fun. Uh, just diving behind enemy lines. Five years chasing you. Not even going to be able to do anything. Balance. So, at this point, I kind of feel like Aces just need to look to charge down mid. Like... Trying to play passively and farming it out and spreading the map is not that great against a Spirit Breaker and specifically against Offensive Vision. Right now, Moscow 5 have the top uh, lane ward, but they're in a position to put out like two or three more aggressive wards where they can just chain gank the jungle. So I would have to say just, just try to go together as 5. Try to see what you can do with the Shadow Fiend. Maybe let them get level 16 just a little bit more, but no, they'll go for the smoke now. The problem, Spirit Breaker was charging the Shadow Fiend right when they smoke. So it's very clear to Moscow 5, or should be, and it uh, means that it's unlikely that Asus will find an opening. Yeah. Uh, and they're smoking in the wrong direction here because uh, Roshan mm -hmm. is getting ganked in his own home. Once again, there's been a break-in. They're going to steal something very valuable to him. Uh, his life as well as Aegis, 8 and 29, Moscow 5, we're gonna claim that. Aegis goes to Quop once again, and she's building, she's tacking into right click, um, going for that Millstrom mm -hmm. into Mjolnir. Uh, extra damage from the right clicks as well as the potential static storm that you can apply onto the Spirit Breaker, is gonna be very invaluable. Here comes the Spirit Breaker charge, once again, hating on that Lina uh, as much as I am. And oh, my actually go for the line. Just slams it in. That BKB. One more, run, one more oh. bash will take him out. Oh, Tron, uh, gonna save his life. But here comes the Quab. It's not gonna say hi to him. And Sonic Wave screams into the forest, and out he goes. DK Fobos getting glimpsed. Lucky for him, it was only two steps backwards. Uh, but yeah, they're gonna need a lot more steps than that to come back into the fight. And Illidan, he's got his BKB, but BKB doesn't really help you kill things. Just helps you get through life a little easier. It's kind of like coffee. Okay. Weird analogy. Yes, I can see that the was comparison. Random. Yeah. BKB is like coffee, you know, keeps you up. Sure. Keeps you, <laughs> you know, can't can't, uh, can't start a day off without a fresh cup. So, we'll see. There's some people that love BKB, some people that hate it and try to Same only like pick coffee. it up when you absolutely have to. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, yeah, I would have to say it's a relative thing. You just, you have your opinion. Some people like coffee. Some people like tea, which would be like a Lincoln Sphere or Manta style or something. You just, it's preferential. You, you just, as whatever works for you. But we see what works for Tron is charging through, oh, finding Run, anybody he can kill and just gunning them sure, down. I'm not sure if EKB is going to do him any good here. He's going to get caught out. There's a, well, we'll do some good. If he stops bashing, and now G spends most of his BKB not 
stepping back with Slender getting called in. Finger of that pokes him in the eye. Down he goes. Illidan using his BKB charge. His reincarnation is going to be very unpleasant when he comes back into the fight. DK Phobos getting burnt here. Illidan Storm Rage losing every single bit of mana. Now having a Sun Ray in his back. Going to burn a hole right through him. And the Axe goes down to the Weaver back in the back lines. Only Shadow Fiend still standing. If I was Asus, I would call GG. Go to game two and just rethink my strategy here. Maybe decide to ban out Spirit Breaker over Sniper. Uh, because right now, I think Tron is looking way, way cooler than the Sniper is. Uh, or ever will. And Sunray brings them all up to speed once again. Bignum just really good at that Phoenix. And now she getting charged there. Gonna die for the seventh time this game. And a GG comes out 9 to 35. Moscow 5. I wouldn't call this one a luck win. No, they just yeah, uh, outplayed them. They they knew how good their heroes could be in an environment where they just dived the opposition. And there was only one dive that didn't pay off for them. The bottom tier one, they didn't have the target priority or the line of sight to really focus anybody down. So that caused its fair share of problems going in against Reincarnate as well. But other than that, they've made pretty much no errors this game whatsoever. I mean, just look at the deaths. And only the Disruptor has really copped anything. Everybody else is one or two. Too. So Moscow 5 in general, just they knew, knew the safest engagements to take and they played even under heavy fire. Like the Laguna, the Finger of Death, Culling Blade, it's no joke as far as damage output, but it just they put so much offensive pressure out that Aces didn't have the chance to even go mm -hmm. for that kind of two hit combo. So really nice aggression from Moscow 5, paints a very clear picture of how they want to play this match out and we'll have to see how Aces pull a response. Yeah, Lion Lina, uh, not a. Um, defensive support duo. They are very aggressive. They need to take the first move and SF, I'm not sure he's the right mid hero to complement such a ganking squad. Usually you want to start out with a stun and then Lion Lina follow up and you get a guaranteed kill. But yeah, uh, when Weaver's put there, like you said, it, Weaver was just super hard to, uh, to beat in the mid lane and it does made it very difficult for them, the Lion Lina, to do anything. It got really awkward and then the Queen of Pain with her big items, one or two fights, the snowball starts, and then it just went downhill from there. And Moscow 5, surprising us all. I mean, everyone in Dota 2 Lounge these days have been losing a lot of rares in this I League. And, well, 14 to 86%, or rather 16 to 84%. So a lot of uh, items going to be lost, and we'll see if it really does happen in game number 2, or will Aces Polar, being uh, the good team that they are, come back into it. We'll see. Very shortly in game number two, but before that, remember to drop uh, us Blaze casting as well as Lysander as well. That's myself, and Blaze is the guy casting with me. If you like his insight, follow him at Blaze Casting and follow me at Lysander Zenora. Our names are on the top right corner. Give us your feedback, give us your love, and we'll be right back for game number two. Don't go anywhere. Much love and Kappa.